you spoke about the universe is expanding. And so, so if you want to actually measure the event horizon of the universe, you multiply the speed of light. By the time the universe has existed, you will get the the event horizon for it. But you, the universe is also expanding in the in the middle, in pockets in between. So let's go there. You brought it up. You opened up this can of worms. So now we're going to go there. Sure. Around 20 years ago, you wrote a paper with the legendary Leonard Susskind and Lisa Dyson titled Disturbing Implications of a Cosmological Constant. In the abstract, you said that we argue that these assumptions inevitably lead to very deep paradoxes, which seem to require major revisions of our usual assumptions. What is the cosmological constant? What problem does it pose in theoretical physics? What disturbing implications, deep paradoxes does it give rise to? Yeah, so that's a, that's a very interesting can of worms. I'm glad you opened it. <laughs> uh, so what's the cosmological constant? It goes back to Einstein. When Einstein was writing down the equations of general relativity back in the 19 teens, the prevailing view among astronomers was that the universe was static. So they believed that the universe was more or less the same as time passed. It wasn't expanding, wasn't contracting. There were some deep paradoxes associated with that, um, but there's always deep paradoxes associated with any theory of physics, and that was just what people believed at the time. Mm -hmm. So when Einstein wrote down his theory, uh, it was essentially unique based on the principles that he was applying to it. There's, there's very little wiggle room for what that theory could be. And he discovered pretty quickly that it did not allow the universe to be static. So I mentioned that the geometry is something that evolves in time in his theory. And yeah. a static geometry where you had a bunch of stars and galaxies that just remained at fixed positions simply wasn't a solution to the theory. And the reason is not hard to understand. Um, even Newtonian gravity, the theory of gravity that came before, wouldn't allow that because gravity is attractive. So the galaxy sticks together because the stuff in it is pulling on the other stuff in it. It's more or less, it's not so different from the solar system where planets orbit around the sun. In the galaxy, stars like our sun orbit around the galactic center just because they're affected by the gravity of all the other stars in the galaxy. Yeah. It's like a big pancake where things, it's spiraling around, everything's orbiting. That's fine. Now you put some other galaxies in though, and those galaxies should be attracting each other. And so why would they remain static? They're not going to remain static. They're going to fall towards each other. In Einstein's theory, still true. Um, and it's a better defined theory than Newton's was, especially when you try to apply it to the whole universe. And it just unequivocally wouldn't allow that. Unless Einstein added one extra term, which was literally the only thing he could add that would have any effect, the so-called cosmological constant. Yeah. And if you added that term and it had just the right strength and just the right sign, uh, then there was a solution that looks static. As it turns out, it's not really static. It's only static if the universe is perfectly homogeneous, which it isn't. It's got galaxies in certain positions. And even then, it's unstable. The slightest perturbation will make it either expand or contract. Einstein apparently didn't realize that. Um, so it actually doesn't work to explain a static universe. But in any case, astronomers shortly afterwards discovered that it looked like the universe was expanding. And then Einstein was rather upset that he had added this term, you know, just trying to explain a static universe when in fact it wasn't, because if he'd had the kind of courage of his convictions and said, my theory predicts a universe that's not static, it's expanding or contracting, and then they discovered it, would have been better. Not that he needed it, but uh, so that was the origin of it. And so then for how long? 70 years, people forgot about it, more or less. Not totally forgot about it, but, you know, there was no evidence that cosmological constant was there, so it wasn't considered particularly important. It was just a curiosity. And then the very first physics colloquium that I ever went to when I started my PhD was Saul Perlmutter, who was leading one of two major projects to measure supernova in the universe. Okay. Supernova are interesting because supernova of a certain type, we believe, always explode with the same intrinsic brightness. So they're like, you know, if you remember what a 60 watt incandescent light bulb is, it's been a while since anyone used those, but they all have the same brightness as long as they're working correctly. So if you had a bunch of them distributed in the night, you could tell how far away they are by how bright they appear. Yeah. The further away they are, the dimmer they look, yeah. you could then infer the distance. Supernova of type 1a are like that. We know how bright they are intrinsically. So by how bright they appear, we know how far away they are. And we can tell how, fa how fast they're moving away from us because there's a Doppler shift to light. Like when a police siren goes by you, the pitch shifts down. Mm -hmm. If a light source is moving away, it's Doppler shifted. Yeah. So we can tell how far away they are and how fast they're moving. And then with a lot of them, we can reconstruct a map of distance versus recession velocity, speed moving away from us. And that is what we mean by the expansion of the universe. We mean that things further away are moving away from us faster. And when they, 
um, analyzed all this data, they discovered that the expansion of the universe was not slowing down, which is what Einstein's theory without the cosmological constant would predict. You take all those galaxies and you make them move apart from each other. The gravity is still attractive. So the speed with which they move apart will decrease over time. Yeah. They may never come to rest Throw a rock up hard enough. It will never come back to earth. It will escape into orbit or out of the solar system even. Oh. So, you know, they may never come to rest and we collapse, but the speed with which they're expanding should be slowing down, but it wasn't. It was accelerating. It was going faster and faster with time. So there was some kind of repulsive gravity, something that was compensating for the attraction between these galaxies. That's the cosmological constant. So it came back 70 years later and um, it was a shock. It was a huge shock. People didn't like it at all. And it's still a, a real, it's, a, it's an enormous mystery. Why is it there? But why is it so tiny? It had such a small value that we didn't even know about it until the 1990s, late 1990s, when we could do precise enough cosmological experiments. 